Hello everyone, it's Thursday Q&A Live here at Digital DJ Tips with me, Phil Morse. This is an hour of your questions about your DJing. We are live across all of our channels. We're on YouTube, we're on Facebook. We're also on our Global DJ Network for the first time for a few weeks because we finally fixed a niggling bug with going live there. So welcome Global DJ Network people. Sorry we've been away. Uh, did I mention Twitch? Also, we're on Mixcloud Live. Did I mention that? I don't know. I lost track. Anyway, we're across all of our channels. That's the important thing. And so wherever you want to comment, wherever you want to say something, they all come through to our production computer here, and I will see your questions. So please ask questions. Uh, this is all about you. It's all about helping you. We're Digital DJ Tips. We're the world's biggest online DJ school, and our job is to help you become better DJs and better DJ producers. We've got 25 DJ courses, we've obviously got the, the huge Digital DJ Tips website, and all that other stuff, but this is, this is our live Thursday weekly show, and I love it. Uh, so welcome everyone. If you enjoy it, as always, I'd love you to do the stuff down there. Also click the share button, because share helps us to get the message out to other DJs. So please, this is all free but we'd love you to do that for us. So, this is about your questions. It's Thursday Q&A live, and there's a few things going on in the DJ world, so let's have a look at them, because maybe your questions might center around what these are. So this is the comment cam, for those of you that are new to Digital DJ Tips, this is where I sit and chat to you guys and girls, lots and lots of you piling in already. Hello to Steve in a sunny Isle of Wight. Looks like the weather's brilliant everywhere at the moment, apart from in Germany. There you go, I spoke too soon there. Uh, but in uh, in um, uh, in the Netherlands, it's fine as well. Spring is in the air, says Mixmaster G. Uh, hello to GM and the Ruckus and Martin and everyone else who is uh, saying hello there. It's lovely to have you here. Right, so we're talking about things going on in the DJ world, and there are a few things going on in the DJ world right now. Uh, so one of them is that Tractor, this was literally announced just a couple of You can see it now. Uh, this is Tractor working. Those tracks that you can see there are from Tractor, and you can see down the left-hand side of the screen there, uh, we've got Tractor uh, here. See where my mouse is now? I'm trying to get it in the right place to show you. Down here somewhere. It's a tiny little mouse pointer. You probably can't see anything at all. Like a fly on your computer screen. Anyway, Beatport is there, and that's a big deal for you Tractor users because it's not often we can bring you good news about new new things in Tractor for you. Uh, so that's going on in the DJ world, but that's not all because kind of uh, at the same time, there was an announcement from Algorithm about their DJ platform. And Algorithm's DJ now has a better neural mix. This is the real time stems. Uh, so now has four stems, so you can separate the bass line from the rest of the melody. Uh, and also, uh, it's got the ability to loop just certain parts of the stems, like momentarily loop certain parts of the stems. Uh, they've brought quantize into it, they've brought effects into it that you can put across just like the vocals or just the drums or whatever, uh, and improved uh, lots of other things about Algorithm's DJ software. So that is now uh, available, uh, and I've written that up as well on the website, so you can head over to digitaldjtips.com to learn more about that. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been a busy week or two for DJ News. Audacity is going to get a new look. We all use Audacity, right? But it's not the prettiest software in the world. But uh, it is, uh, it's got a new boss, a new head honcho, and they're promising to put money into it and make it better. Uh, so a lot going on. So maybe one of those things is what you'd like to talk about. Or maybe something completely differently. Uh, in our book, we talk about the five areas of DJing. M music, gear, techniques, playing out, promoting yourself. They're all as important as each other. So whatever your question, however beginner, however advanced, and whatever it is, uh, there they are, the five areas of DJing. It's probably hard to see that in this light. Oh, look at that, the camera adjusted. and made me dark instead, I love it. Um, so uh, yeah, whatever your questions might be, I'd love you to ask them. I'm here to answer them for the next hour. So welcome. Right, let's get questions First, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do what probably any TV producer would say don't do, and I'm gonna dive into a really long one, which I haven't had a chance to read. And this is from Steve, uh, who says, uh, Hi Phil and everyone watching, hope you're having a great week. I'm new to DJing, I just bought myself some XC6000Ms. I wanna buy the new DJ Angelo course, but I haven't been able to use my decks because I can't transfer any of my crates to uh, a USB stick. I formatted the device in XFAT MBR and listed questions to Denon on the forums. I'm still having no luck. Uh, right, so I think the person who can help you uh, is one of our regulars who also runs his own AMA every Tuesday, uh, Mixmaster G, uh, who is live. And Mixmaster G, if you've got anything you can advise 
to Steve. Uh, he's on Facebook. Uh, Mixmaster G is the person behind the awesome DJ conversion utility suite of apps that can move your DJ library between Denon and Algorithm and Tractor and Serato and Rekordbox and so on. Um, so if anyone knows, Mixmaster G knows. So maybe you can help Steve out there. Um, by the way, you spoke about our course with DJ Angelo. I would be, it would be remiss of me not to tell you about that because you might not know about it. And the opening offer closes very soon. Uh, so if you head over to the website, you'll see our DJ Angelo uh, course there. This is the advert for it, right in the middle of our website right now. Click on the advert and you'll head off to uh, a page that tells you all about it. If you play hip hop, if you play funk, if you play soul, if you play R and B, Latin, pop, rock, all those kinds of uh, all those kinds of um, genres, and you want to play them with flair, you want to play them using wordplay and tone play and a bit of scratching and juggling and all the things you see top DJs doing. Well, Angelo is your man. He's one of the most respected DJs in this field. Uh, he's got millions and millions of views on YouTube. He tours the world showing off this stuff. And we've made a course with him. It's called DJ Angelo's Tricks and Transitions. And as you can see on your screen now, the special launch offer of this course closes in 16 hours. Uh, and you save $100. So do go and take a look at this course if you're interested in that kind of stuff. Uh, an easy way of getting to it is just to use our short code there, djtips.co slash tricks. Uh, and that'll take you straight to the page I just showed you. Or go to the Digital DJ Tips website uh, and you can do it from there. So uh, I'm actually just going to correct something because I noticed earlier there was a bit of a lag on my voice, uh, which is just a little bit annoying. So I'm just going to correct the audio and just put that little bit of uh, my microphone delay back in there. Let me know if my voice now is a bit more in sync with what you're seeing on the screen. Um, it's all, it's all, um, it's all trial and error of this stuff. Uh, whenever you add new cameras into the system, the audio lag changes a little bit and you have to just tweak things. Uh, right, so that's our first question done. We've broken the seal, so to speak. Um, hello to everyone. Uh, we, hundreds and hundreds of people tuning in now across all the channels. Uh, so hello to Sebastian, who is uh, uh, just saying good evening, everyone. So you must be Europe wide. Uh, hello to Lee, who says, ah, oh, the new Reloop laptop stand. Yes, this stand here is a new Reloop laptop stand. Uh, this is pretty cool because this, I'll show you. This looks like a normal laptop stand, but it's got a little ace up its sleeve. So here you can see we've got USB sockets. So the idea is you plug a lead from the top one here into your laptop, they provide the leads with it, and you pr plug your laptop's power in down here if you're using a MacBook, and then you've all automatically got four powered USB sockets here that you can plug in anything USB in your system. So a problem a lot of the time when you're DJing with uh, modern gear is that you're using a computer that doesn't either have enough USBs to plug everything in or it's just gonna get messy. Well this way, the laptop stand is gonna be near all your gear. So you can plug it all into the stand. You can also charge your phone from the stand and all kinds of good stuff there as well. So this is the new Reloop laptop stand. Uh, it's called the Stand Hub believe it or not. Uh, we, we're reviewing this at the moment, we're just playing with it now. So uh, that's why it's set up, you're very observant, uh, whoever said that. Um, it is indeed the new Reloop laptop stand. It was Lee. Uh, hello to Modish Mark, hello to Paul, uh, hello to Jai Panade, uh, and Ian in Chester, uh, and DJ2AM, uh, who's changed his name. Uh, so there we go. Um, uh, thank you for letting us know that. Um, right, uh, questions. Apparently it was, it was snowing in North Finland, so some of us have got sunshine, but not everyone. Um, Leon says, in the last couple of weeks, you've shown us two sets of controllers. We've done mini controllers or micro controllers, and we've also done um, uh, 300 to $500 controllers. In fact, we've done three, because we've just done uh, 500 to 1,000 as well. Are you gonna talk about standalone systems? We might, uh, we might well do that. Yes, thanks for, for asking, Leon. Um, so how do you use the discount on Ableton, says Gerald. So I'm guessing, Gerald, you've bought one of our courses that gives you an Ableton discount. And the way you use your Ableton discount, we, we get our, our production courses, like the Layback Loop course and the production course that Joey's made, Dance Music Formula, they get you 25% off Ableton. Which if you're spending 699 on, uh, on Ableton, that's quite a lot of money. It's like $170 or something. Um, 
it's easy. Uh, we email you when you buy a course and tell you how to do it. But if for some reason you haven't got that email or you haven't seen it, just drop a quick email to info at digitaldjtips.com uh, explaining that you've bought a course and that you want the Ableton discount. Uh, and they will check that you do have one of our courses and that you haven't been given a discount before. And assuming both those things are true, they will send you a discount code that you just use at the Ableton um, buy stage. You put the coupon code in to their cart and that's how you get the Ableton discount, Gerald. So, Wayne says, uh, recording a set in Rekordbox via Beatport link. Can it be done? I'm considering cancelling my subscription already as I want to listen and improve. Okay, so this is a problem with all DJ software. It would be a problem here with Tractor. Not that I've tested it, but I'm going to guarantee you it would be a problem here with Tractor as well. If I want to record in DJ software, when I have got this, streaming service or streaming services enabled down here it's not possible to do that and the reason it's not possible to do that is that the licenses for the streaming software say that they are not allowed to let you record when you're streaming music otherwise you could be just having it playing night and day streaming all the music off that particular system and turning it all into mp3s and pirating it and all that kind of stuff it's a bit lame when it comes to dj sets because obviously you're subscribing to a DJ server because you want to DJ and do something with that music, but that's how it is. So the record buttons are, are disabled in all software. It's not just Rekordbox, it's all software, Wayne. And so the question is, how do you record your sets if that's the case? Well, luckily there are ways of doing it. The simplest way of doing it is to get an audio rerouter, a virtual cable program, and plug it into your computer, and that can take the audio from your record box sound card in your controller and allow you to record it on something like Audacity. VB Cable is a free one. So this is the first one I'm gonna recommend that you check out. It's for Windows, it's also for Mac. Uh, VB Audio Cable it's called, and it is uh, this one here, VB Audio Cable. Go and find it, and this will allow your recording software of choice in your computer to see your DJ controller, to see your record box software if you like. And you just click record and you can record on Audacity or on whatever you've got that you record on on your computer laptop. So that's the first and easiest way of doing it. And so I would try that first. Of course, you could plug a audio interface into the back of your controller. And the audio interface we always recommend is the, uh, the mix, box one, which I have one here. You can see at the very back there. It's typical that as soon as I want something, I can't find it, isn't it? Note to self, find the mix box and make it more obvious. Uh, but any uh, audio interface will do it. I mean, this, this is a DVS audio interface. This is designed to put plug record decks in to your software, but this will do it just fine. This is a little Denon DJ uh, DVS, DS1 it's called, DVS interface. Anything that can take audio in and send out via a USB to your computer, uh, a digital signal plugged into a spare output on the back of your controller will work. So, uh, you know, we also have uh, here a mixer that we use all the time. I'm knocking things over left, right and center here. And we have a mixer we use all the time for this kind of thing. And uh, we've just got a little, Jesus, trash in the place. Well, we've got a little PV mixer here. Uh, this is just a little live mixer, uh, which has got lots of uses in DJing and audio uh, generally. Uh, but on the back of this, it also has an audio output, which means that you can, sorry, a, a, a digital output, which means you can plug it directly into your computer to record whatever is going on in there. So that's another way of doing it. So there's lots and lots of ways of doing that. Uh, don't cancel your subscription. There's a lot to be said for streaming services, but that is one of their downsides. Uh, certainly, I'd have a look at that first because a VB cable is a very simple way of doing it. You might just find that this problem disappears instantly for you, Wayne. So, next question. Uh, apparently it's gloomy and cold in the Netherlands. So obviously um, different parts of the Netherlands are getting different types of weather. Piddling it down in Liverpool. I love the way you, uh, you guys and girls share your, <laughs> your weather with us. Uh, and in Manchester where I'm from. So there we go. Um, it's not, it's not a, uh, it's not raining here, it's 20, 25 degrees and broad beating sunshine. And at the end of this broadcast, I'm going home to spend an hour sat out in it doing nothing with a cold beer. So I don't wanna make anyone jealous, but that is the way 
it's happening. Uh, DJ Blue, I'm struggling to get good, good audio quality using Zoom. Any suggestions? Uh, yes, there are suggestions uh, that we can help you with. Uh, if you head over to Digital DJ Tips, head to uh, How to DJ Zoom Parties, seven tips for awesome live streams. Just DJ, uh, just, just um, Google Zoom DJ uh, and you'll find this article. Uh, in this article, uh, we talk you through how to tweak your audio to make it better. The truth is though, you're never gonna get brilliant audio in Zoom uh, because it just isn't made for that. Uh, but there are certain tricks you can try which will improve it a little bit. So have a look at that article, DJ Blue. Hello, John. Fabulous Phil, I like it. I'll take that. Thank you and good night. No, we better carry on. Let's hope I'm still fabulous at the end of it. Uh, so the next question is from, uh, is from, I'm looking for a question, looking for a question, DJ Young. DJ Young says, which class should I buy first? The Scratch cl class or the new DJ Angelo open format class? I want to learn both. I would say buy the DJ Angelo class first um, for two reasons. One, it's on offer, so you're just gonna save some money. Uh, the Scratch class isn't on offer and won't be for the foreseeable future. But two, the DJ Angelo class contains scratching. It's got the cut scratch, it's got the baby scratch, it's got the, um, it's got the transformer scratch, it's got um, beat juggling. It's got lots of scratching, which is gonna make everything look good if you've never scratched before, as far as your concern and your audience is a concern. And the scratch course builds on that, and it'll take you past that. But as well as that, the Angelo course has got wordplay, tone play, pitch play, uh, how to DJ big changes between BPMs and genres, how to use key, how to use acapellas, and how to do all these other things which are arguably gonna get you more results quicker than just learning to scratch. Because scratching is something that's quite hard, it takes quite a long time, and it's only one skill, and it's not always relevant. Whereas the Angelo course is full of stuff that's highly relevant to all DJs who play open format, all kinds of music, and wanna blend it properly in a set. So I'd say go start with the Angelo course, and not least cost, you're saving $100 on this one. Uh, so buy this one now, next time the scratch one's on offer, buy that one, you saved yourself two or $300 that way. Um, so I hope that helped. Uh, DJ99, did we miss the monthly session or is it still in the works? Okay, this is, um, it's time for me to fess up something here. This is for all of our students. So for those of you that aren't a student of Digital DJ Tips, um, when you buy one of our courses, you don't only get a course, but you also get access to what we call Student Hub. And Student Hub is our private Facebook group for students. There's several thousand students in there across all our courses. Every month, in Student Hub, we go live for an hour. It's not only me, but Steve Canuetto, the other owner of Digital DJ Tips. And it's like a virtual classroom. It's a bit like this, but every question gets answered. I, I can't answer every question here, I just can't. Um, there's just too, too many, there's hundreds of them. So the, uh, the point of that is to make sure students get a chance to meet each other, to hear about what other students are up to, to get questions answered they didn't know that they wanted answered, and just to hang out together, really. The problem is yesterday we had a catastrophic failure of pretty much everything uh, and tried to go live and we couldn't. So we've fixed it all today, but we decided to delay the whole thing by a week. So next Wednesday at the normal time, and you will get an email about it, 99, is the student live that was delayed yesterday. There is a post in Student Hub about that, uh, but sometimes these things go wrong. Uh, and it really was a comedy of errors. There was errors with our broadcast software, there was errors with our Facebook authentication, uh, and then errors with trying to get uh, the pair of us onto the Facebook Live when we finally managed to get it going, uh, which meant poor Steve was flailing away there, um, unable to cope on his own. Uh, so we decided to, because he, couldn't, he couldn't, couldn't bring me in on it, so we decided to delay it for a week. Anyway, that is what uh, happened yesterday. Uh, where's the best place to upload videos of live streams, says Jermaine. Great question. YouTube, as long as all the tracks on the video are not going to get your live stream blocked, you can just give it a try, leave it unlisted and see what happens. Or the best way of doing it is to make a very quick video of all the tracks that you want to use in your live stream, upload it to YouTube unlisted, and then YouTube will tell you um, whether it's blocked or not. And if it is blocked, which tracks are causing it to be blocked. Uh, and that way, when you come to actually perform in the live stream, you know the tracks you're using are, if you like, uh, whitelisted by YouTube and won't cause you any problems. Uh, now, you know, live streaming is a big thing. I can talk to you about specific questions here, uh, but if you're interested in going further into live streaming, head to the Digital DJ Tips courses page, scroll down to the uh, specialized courses and take a look at DJ 
live streaming made easy. Uh, this course here will tell, tell you how to do it from your phone all the way up to a proper studio like the one I'm in now uh, and how to get it all right. So we have a course on that if you want to take that further. Uh, but uh, as a short answer to your question, um, YouTube is the best place to archive, but do make sure all the tracks are not going to get you banned. Uh, they won't get you banned, they'll just get your, your, your live stream either blocked or you choose whether the tracks are muted. Uh, but you don't want that stuff to go on. Uh, you want it all to play smoothly, don't you? Uh, so, um, Ian, on Rekordbox now, I'm on Rekordbox now, and I miss how Traktor could actually hold a loop in time, even without using sync. Rekordbox drifts so much on loops. You know, we give Traktor a hard time sometimes, and we've got Traktor here uh, because it's just got streaming added to it. So that's why we've got Traktor here, and why we've got a Traktor controller on our desk today, because uh, we've been testing it. We do give Traktor a hard time sometimes, but one thing Traktor is very, very good at is when you've got electronic music, it's good at locking and moving and playing with loops. It's just the best at it, Ian. And I'm not surprised you missed it, um, because it is better than anything on that. Uh, so, uh, next question is from Kyle, who says, Hi, Phil. I was wondering if you'd review the DJ software I use. Uh, I use Dex RE by PC DJ. Uh, we uh, haven't reviewed that yet, and we uh, probably won't just because it's not used by many people. I'm glad you're using it, and I hope you're happy with it, Kyle, but it just isn't used by uh, by many people. Uh, you know, in our survey of DJs, DJs every year, it's just, it's just you could probably count in the hundreds the number of people who use it. So, so sorry. Uh, DJ D, uh, Gold Coast in Australia, Thank you for staying up. Are Apple M1s safe for DJ software, specifically Rekordbox DJ? Not sure if Rekordbox is M1, M1 um, proven yet. I think the last thing they said was it is, but certain hardware won't work with it, if I'm not wrong. Uh, you're on YouTube, so if anyone knows for sure, maybe let DJ D know on YouTube. But it was certainly on the Rekordbox page uh, about that. Um, yeah, not sure off the top of my head. If I, if I did know, I've forgotten, I'm afraid. Um, so so Danny says, can you still use track to key with Beatport Link? So you mean, can you still key mix? Can you, yes, you can. If you look at the tractor, let me just open a playlist here uh, from tractor. So you see that on the right hand side, these tracks, we've got the tractor. So you've got 5D and 5M where it says key. These are the tractor keys on all the Beatport tracks and they're on all the tracks when you go into the playlist. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to, um, uh, load the track to see the key and the keys are also uh, on the tracks up here uh, and then when they're loaded you can use key lock and key shift and all that stuff so yes you can use track to key just as if it was a local track on the new implementation by the way if you just joined us tractor now has streaming services uh, it's one of the big bits of news uh, today uh, about um, uh, about Traktor is it's just got uh, streaming services uh, incorporated. Uh, it's the top story on Digital DJ Tips, so you can head over there and have a look. Uh, we've also made a little video about it, uh, so you can watch the video as well. So the next live question is from... Um, just having a little look. Uh, the next live question is Mixmaster G is struggling with video quality. Don't think anyone else is though Mixmaster G. So I think it's um, it's not a universal thing that. Uh, Matter says I bought the DJ Angelo course and it's uh, well it looks like it's great by your uh, little symbols there. Um, you're welcome, Steve, for answering the question. Uh, James has asked a um, flippant question. What is the airspeed velocity of an unla unladen swallow? Uh, I don't know, James, actually, but if anyone can help James, he's on, he's on uh, YouTube with that one. Uh, Jai Panay says, the only thing lacking in DJ, remember we were talking about the new DJ um, uh, things that have been added by algorithm to its software in this article here, which you can read on Digital DJ Tips. Uh, the only thing lacking in DJ uh, is full library management and sync between mobile and laptop. Uh, indeed, so let's hope they do that stuff. They've added, um, they've added Quantize, which I think is great. It's good to see that added in, uh, in DJ Pro AI, uh, which is in the new edition. Uh, Blake says, I got a Logitech Streamcam Plus yesterday. I love it, it's absolutely stonking. We were talking about Logitech cameras, weren't we, just the other day. I've actually got some down here. We always use them as backup cameras, as portable cameras, uh, and so on. Here they are. If you're looking for a webcam, this is the one I would recommend if you can afford it. They're not the cheapest, uh, but they're really nice. These little Logitechs, uh, they 
They come with proper mounting for tripods. Proper, this mounting clip comes off, and then you've got another proper clip that you can put on for putting on your laptop in the old fashioned way, if you like. Uh, but they also have a really nice long cable, which is good quality. She's got a USB-C on it, which I like because I don't like messing around with adapters and we use Macs here. Uh, but also the quality is very good and it's got a nice app to control it, the Logitech, uh, I can't remember what it's called now. No, escapes me. My computer will tell me. If I, Log, Log, Logi Capture, it's called. It's a really nice app for, um, for kind of controlling the camera as well. So yeah, if you've got the money and you want a stream cam, they are the next gen stream cams from Logitech and thoroughly recommend them. Uh, we use uh, we use SLR cameras here. This is an SLR camera I'm talking to you on uh, just because we we want the extra resolution and stuff for recording. But, uh, but for, for streaming, they're pretty damn good. Um, so uh, Steve is loving the new tractor news. Says I might have to dig out my Z2 or Z2 and have a blast. Um, so uh, hey, Phil says Tyler, got a question. Hello, Tyler. Uh, what's the most pertinent information to include in the DJ bio? Uh, as well as in a mission statement for a DJ business. So let's talk quickly about this thing. DJ bios, there's some great um, what not to put in a DJ bio um, posts on the internet, and I'm actually going to look for them. Um, uh, the post that I would recommend that I've always thought is a good one on this, it's quite old. Um, I'm not sure how old it is now. Uh, seven years old, unbelievably. It is in, oh, it's actually on DJ Tech Tools. I always thought we should write a version of this and we never did. So if you head over to DJ Tech Tools and search for the dreaded DJ bio, six tips to make a good one, uh, you'll find a good, uh, a good article there that talks through that. Uh, but also uh, you can uh, search for what not to put in a DJ bio. If you search for what not to put in a DJ bio, there's some quite funny articles uh, on the internet uh, about that. Um, uh, the DJ anti-profile, that's one I was trying to remember. How not to write a DJ bio. Uh, it looks like this. If you just search how not to write a DJ bio, you will find this article. It's pretty old, um, but it's very, very funny. And it's got a whole list of things not to say. Um, so, you know, by reading those two articles, you'll get a good idea. When it comes to your mission statement on your website, think about your customer. You know, if you're writing a website mission statement for a, a mobile DJ website, you know, you don't want to be using the word I and we a lot. You want to be using the word you a lot. And so um, if your point you want to make is, uh, I don't like what other DJs play. I think I can do a better job of music for weddings. You wouldn't put that as a mission statement. Uh, you'd say, having identified a gap in the market for people like you who don't want cheesy music at their weddings, uh, we, uh, we spoke to customers and set up our, you know, cheese free wedding service. I'm just making this up, by the way, on the spot, obviously. Um, uh, you've told us that you prefer classier music and we are the company that provide that. And we, you know, these are the things we've done to provide that for people like you. So using you a lot of the time will pull you back to what your customers want to hear. The About Us page is really about why you're a good fit for your customers. Um, by the way, if you're into all this kind of marketing stuff, uh, there is something I'd like to tell you about. Um, we have a program called the Digital DJ Tips, DJ, um, uh, Digital DJ Lab. So Digital DJ Lab looks like this. I've got to stop switching to tractor there when I mean to switch somewhere else. You head to the DJ Courses section of Digital DJ Tips and scroll down to the very bottom, you'll find Digital DJ Lab. Here it is. Uh, you can read about it there, but I'm going to give you a tip now. I shouldn't say this, but I will. Don't buy it. And the reason why you shouldn't buy it, I'll tell you about in a minute. So this is Digital DJ Lab. Have a look at it. It is a program, a subscription program for DJs who want to stay on top of their game. In other words, you've done the courses, you've got yourself to where you want to be, but you just want to stay on top of stuff. So I want to just show you inside Digital DJ Lab uh, here. This is actually inside the course itself. And what we have in Digital DJ Lab is a pro members level. And in the pro members level, there's an awful lot of stuff for people who are making money out of their DJ. This is not for people who are just doing DJing as a hobby. You pay, you pay for this. This is a, not a cheap subscription. But what you get in here is the kind of stuff you're seeing here, how to turn your DJ from a hobby into an extra income, getting Instagram right, getting noticed with live streams. 
uh, converting your DJ library, setting goals and finding time for DJing, choosing a name and logo, getting a great website, nailing your Facebook presence, how to play out in bars, lounges, pubs, warm up gigs, club gigs, headliners, festivals, how to promote events, how to forge partnerships and use feedback to grow your profile, uh, how to assemble a team around you, uh, and lots of tips on things like creativity and networking. Uh, this is the place for if you want to be able to perform better and if you want to be able to promote yourself better. And Digital DJ Lab uh, is full of stuff like that that you don't find anywhere else. So if your interest is in DJ bios, marketing, websites, how to reach people, how to use email, how to use social media to reach customers, basically the kind of thing that you can do to make money out of DJing, do take a look at Digital DJ Lab. Why did I say don't buy it? Because next week, and I shouldn't tell you this stuff, the, the rule in the company is when you've got one promotion on, and we have got a great promotion on now, DJ Angelo's course, don't talk about another one. But hey, when I tell you about it, you'll realize that they're completely complimentary. Next week, you can try all of that stuff for just a dollar. So you can buy the Angelo course if you want and try Digital DJ Lab next week for a dollar. Uh, you get a whole month of it uh, and uh, we're going to launch that promotion. I think it's the middle of next week, uh, just for a few days. We do it a couple, couple of times a year for a few days just to let people who are interested in our subscription program, which is where the kind of best of our best DJs are. Um, um, have a look at it, try it, see if they like it. Uh, and so what I've just shown you is, is the pro side of that. that. It's full of other stuff as well, but you can wait till next week or just have a look at that page I showed you to learn more about it if you're impatient and want to learn about it now. Um, so yeah, have a look at the lab if, if this is the kind of stuff that is of interest to you. Uh, Philip says, do you know anything about the Newmark NS62 being discontinued? I don't know anything about that. I don't think they make it anymore, but I think there's still plenty out there. It's certainly still utterly relevant. Certainly not a bad thing to buy the uh, NS62 from Newmark. Um, what are the best uh, III speaker units? Are the SO4 best for DJing? Uh, so III are a headphone manufacturer, um, so I don't really know what you mean there. Uh, I guess you're talking about the ear cups that plug on to the headphones, right? Um, so by speaking, you mean, it's you, you mean ear cups. So they're apparently not available. I've just had a look on the II website and it says they're currently not available, the SO4s. Uh, all the II headphones are really, really nice. Uh, the, the, you know, the, whatever the speaker unit is here that they're using is fine. Uh, we've got their headphones in the studio, they're lovely. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about it. I'd just uh, go for the DJ, Shot by DJ, TMA2s are a great headphone. That's the one I'd go for, simple. Keep it simple. Um, the old Newmark V7 reminds me of the new uh, LC1000, says uh, Larry. Yes, Newmark had a, a little spinning deck called the, uh, the uh, V7 back in the day, didn't it? Uh, and now Den and DJ has got its own deck. It's, uh, Den and DJ deck doesn't spin round, but uh, yeah, I take your point there, Larry. It certainly does. Um, so... Uh, Apparently the video is very bad on YouTube. Uh, any other YouTube people struggling with video? Um, because only one person saying that at the moment. Uh, so, um, hello to Johnny in Lisbon, just down around the corner from us there. Uh, are there any stands available for the DDJ 1000 controllers? I need something small and wide to raise it on my desk. I'm currently using the box it came in, which is very bulky, says Big Joe Joyce. Yeah, so I think the best thing for that is to just get to Ikea because they've got all kinds of stands and you can assemble things with legs on just to raise, to give you a raised platform and stuff. That's what I would do. I'd go to Ikea and buy a platform to go on top of my desk to do that kind of thing. I mean, there are desks. Magma have got this kind of like really wide thing, but it's not very pretty. Um, Ikea might be the best for you. YouTube looks great, says a few of you, including you, DJ99. So uh, yeah, I think, I think we're all right. Um, so the next uh, question is from, live question, live question, live question, uh, from Sono Distorto. It says, I won't be comfortable doing a set with streaming tracks. I'd want to store all the Beatport link tracks offline. That's what I want. Well, in the implementation that we've just shown you in Tractor at the moment, you can't do that. Uh, but it's coming in a couple of weeks. As long as you subscribe to the higher tiers of Beatport Pro subscription or BeatSource Pro, and they let you put 50 or 100 tracks cached offline. So you can get that, but you do pay for it. There is a, there's no doubting that you're going, to be pay, you're going to be paying if that's what you want. 
Uh, Kevin, I used to DJ 15 years ago, but I retired because of kids. Kevin, you are not alone. Um, I used to retire, I retired because of kids. I'd love to get back into it as a hobby this time. What controller should I buy as I've only ever used vinyl before? Really simple, buy yourself a, uh, a Pioneer DJ, DDJ400, if you want to use Rekordbox, which is probably on measure the right software for a beginner to use nowadays. Or if you know you want to use Serato, buy a Pioneer DJ, DDJ SB3, uh, SB3. Uh, if you want to use Serato, you can also try a Newmark uh, mix track. They've got the mix track Pro and the mix track Platinum controllers. Uh, those are going to be the right ones for uh, being uh, someone just starting again as a hobby. Uh, and the reason for that is that, and I'll show you on the website where you can find out more about this, by the way, uh, because recently, uh, that's Tractor again, <laughs> because recently we have been publishing uh, about this. So click on Roundups at the top of our website and you'll find the five best controllers under $500 for 2021 there, uh, which is where you're going to find the controllers I'm recommending here. Uh, so if you can buy it, uh, if it's something we recommend uh, and it's on this list, you won't go wrong with it. So here's the five uh, that we're recommending at the moment. If you can get the top one, if you want to use Tractor, there's one there. If you can get the top one, the Hercules one, great, but I, I, I get a feeling you're in America, Kevin, uh, and it's hard to get in America. But anyway, there's five there to choose from. The reason I am recommending you buy a controller that maybe isn't massively expensive is twofold. One, you might never need more than those controllers offer, so it's a waste of money getting a more expensive one. Two, you will at some point, if you get serious about this, want to get a more expensive controller, but only at that point will you know what features you need. Because when you're moving up the ranks uh, to controllers that cost more than $300 or $500, uh, and we've got a post coming uh, this week, tomorrow hopefully, uh, which looks at that, uh, including a video in it. Uh, so keep an eye on the website tomorrow. When you're gonna spend more money, what you'll see is that the controllers that cost more have features that you're paying for that are different from controller to controller. And it might be that you don't want the features that a certain controller offers for the extra money, so it's a waste of money. But you know what you want by the time you've had a controller for a year or two. So starting with a cheaper one means that you don't waste the money and end up uh, buying a more expensive one with features you don't need. And actually a third reason is you're never gonna get rid of that first controller. You're always gonna keep it as a backup controller, so it's not money wasted. So, um, Kevin, I hope that helped you. Uh, hello to uh, Peter, uh, who is talking about free versions of the software. Remember, I, I recommended VB Cable, I think it was called. Uh, Peter says, Soundflower is now called I Show You, apparently, but it works the same. This is another piece of software that lets you record your DJ software in your laptop rather than hitting record in the DJ software that helps you if you're recording live streams. Uh, Albert says, I've got a question about preparing sets. Um, how would you prepare a DJ set for a small party for about 50 people or more? Well, it doesn't matter if it's 50 people or 5,000 people, the way you'd prepare the set would be the same. Uh, you need to figure out who's gonna be there. Uh, so uh, are they all different age groups? Are they all the same age group? Uh, you need to figure out uh, what time you're playing, how long you're playing for, if there's other DJs playing, you need to know what's expected. Generally, parties rather than clubs, people want to hear music they know, so it's going to be more entertainment than education, so don't try and do clever stuff, take stuff they know. Uh, and I always have a rule, which is look at the age of the oldest person at the party, and then figure out what year it was when they were 15 and take music from that year upwards because that's when they started going out and dancing to music. And so you can play music from that year to the present day, mix it up, make sure it's stuff people know, make sure you've got a whole mix of genres uh, and you'll be good, Albert. If you want more info on planning sets, there's a lot in the book. Uh, and the book is uh, on Amazon. It's available at all good bookshops as well. It's also on Kindle. It's also on the Apple um, book um, system. Uh, it's also on Audible if you like to read or listen to audiobooks. Uh, but also you can get this a couple of other ways for free. So look, this book has got a whole section in it about music, about preparing your music for gigs and so on. Uh, it is kind of a bit of a Bible when it comes to this kind of thing. Uh, there's two ways to get it for free. So let me tell you about those now. The first way is to head over to the website and go to the book at the top. There you'll find a list of info uh, about the Digital DJ Tips book, uh, telling you uh, more about it with some uh, some nice testimonials and stuff, but then down the left-hand side, you'll see 
every chapter of the book. And these are written exactly as they're written in the book itself. They've just been cut and pasted into here, uh, along with any accompanying things that couldn't go in the book, like videos and stuff. So this is a great way of reading our book online. But also, you can get a PDF of the book, uh, and you can download the book PDF by clicking Download Book PDF here. It's just going to ask for your email address. You're going to join Digital DJ Tips join our family and uh, as a thank you, I will send you a PDF of the book as well. So two ways of getting hold of your copy of this for free. A lot of people do that and then end up buying it as well. So thank you if you're one of those people. Um, they just want a copy of it. It's kind of like a souvenir, I guess. Um, so I hope that helped you, Albert. Uh, the next uh, question is from uh, Xcosa AU says, hey Phil, do you think we could get a Sunday live stream with the Prime 4 and two LC6000s when the compatibility is sorted? I'd love to do that. You know, the thing with our Sunday live streams is, uh, we do a live stream every Sunday, by the way. If you look at your watch now, add 15 minutes onto it and come back on Sunday, there'll be someone from Digital DJ Tips live um, here, unless you're on Facebook. If you're on Facebook, head over to YouTube or Twitch or whatever. Uh, so um, the reason that we do our Sunday live streams is to kick back and have some fun. Um, so while it's nice to mix, mix, to mix up the gear and try new stuff, that's not really why we do it. Um, you know, personally, I take a little controller and head off into the woods or the mountains or the lakes or something like that if I can. Um, we, we might do that at some point. Um, it would be nice if the LC6000 has become compatible with the Prime 4 at some point, wouldn't it? Um, so uh, Chuck is recommending the Yamaha AG03 mixer. I held up the little one over there that I had in that... Uh, in that over the shoulder shot, didn't I? That you can see the PV one at the bottom of your screen there. Uh, but yes, I agree, the Yamaha mixers are rather nice. Um, any small little live PA mixer is a good one to have um, for general use, but you are looking for one with an audio interface built in if you're gonna double up with an audio interface as well. Uh, Human Cells uses the Evermix box to record sets. That's the one I was, uh, I was, I was unable to find a second ago. In fact, I'm just gonna make a note uh, here to find where that went and put it back on my shelf. Uh, it records directly to your phone. Uh, yep, it does, and it's a good way of doing it. Uh, it does track to S8 to have good turntable preamps. Yes, they're very, very good. Do not worry, DJ A2Z, about buying turntable preamps. Uh, they're perfect there. Um, James uh, is our humorist of the day. Uh, anything but DJ from James. He's displeased because he has a wet dog, so there we go. Uh, and DJ Nolan says, I'm about to buy a Pioneer XDJ XZ. Uh, any reason I should not buy it now and wait for a new or updated version? They probably will update it at some point, but it's a very popular uh, all-in-one system. Uh, it was underpowered when they launched it, to be honest. It's still underpowered now, but it does what it does very well. So uh, if you want it now, buy it now. Uh, Kevin's talking about controllers, saying under 500, I'm not made of money, guys. Well, I've shown you where to find out controllers, 300 to 500, Kevin. I guessed properly, didn't I? Uh, that, that was what you were going to be wanting. Um, this is a good question from Scotty Buzz. Digital vinyl or phase? So phase is the wireless way of turning your turntables into something that can control your DJ software. I'd say phase. It's really good. Uh, it works well with Serato especially. Uh, any chance you would develop a funk soul disco course, says Bram. Well, I've got to tell you that the DJ Angelo course that we just put on sale now uh, covers uh, hip hop, funk, soul, R&B, uh, rock, uh, pop. Uh, so it covers all those genres. Um, but uh, we don't really talk to you too much about mixing live drummers and stuff. Uh, all you've got to do is beat grid those tracks properly, but we do talk to you about beat gridding in that course. Uh, so yeah, we do have a course that is not predominantly house music based now, uh, which is exciting. Uh, that course is on sale for another day, less than a day uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at the offer price. So get it pretty soon if you want it. Um, so Driver John says, hi Phil, I'm at the latter end of your mixtape course and I'm thinking about uh, series names for my mixtapes. Mix, mix uh, is it okay for me to name mine like yours? Balcony Beats, uh, for example, Basement Beats. I would be flattered and thrilled for you to call your mix series Basement Beats, Driver John. It's not even that similar to mine. Uh, well done, good name, go for it. Uh, the next live question is from uh, DJ Scozo 69 Hi Phil, lighting is part of DJing. I'd really like to see more content regarding DMX lighting. Any thoughts, please? Funnily enough, we've got a, 
uh, Chauvet gig bar uh, in our warehouse, which I'm going to bring here and set up. We've rearranged the studio recently. Uh, we've got room now to set up some lighting and have an area to talk about lighting. Uh, so we will hopefully be talking about lighting soon. I want to cover DMX. I also want to cover sound switch. But there's something that I've recommended a couple of times recently uh, to you guys and girls if you're interested in lighting. It's just a couple of books uh, which are very, very good on the subject of lighting. And I have them here. Um, as always, when I talk about these things, they are not to hand. Here they are. These two books here, uh, which are by uh, my friend Jordan Nelson. Uh, and oh, let's try and get them a bit better in the camera there. Uh, and these books are uh, really good to get you uh, started and to go a bit further into lighting. Uh, they're short books, but they're well written. They've got a lot of good information in them, so much so that I'd actually love to make a lighting course with Jordan at some point, but I can't get to the States to do it with him anytime soon. Uh, so have a look at these. They're on Amazon. Uh, and uh, yeah, I, I recommend these books. Uh, so there you go. Jordan Nelson is the guy's name. Okay, one or two more questions, and I've got to get out of here, folks. Um, this question is from uh, Martin. Will you ever do an interview with DJ Bar? Don't know, maybe. Uh, I noticed uh, I noticed my friend Nick over there in the States, uh, Jason Jano's friend, Nick Spinelli, did an interview with DJ Bar recently. Go and look, go and look on Nick's, uh, the Nick Spinelli show on his YouTube channel if you want to see Bar interview. Nice guy. Um, Ken just says, just popped in to say hi. Good work. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Ken. Uh, Scott says, Beatport, is there a best feature we don't know about? I'm still exploring it. I like the, the genre playlists that Beatport make. I think they, they put some good stuff on those. Uh, Peter says, when uh, recording and, and making a mixtape and not including the microphone, is there any way to avoid the reduction in volume when you use the mic? to avoid the reduction in volume when you use the mic. So some DJ systems have what's called a voiceover uh, where the mic will automatically turn down when you start talking onto it. But if that's not turned on, it won't. Um, and so you have to do it manually or else people won't hear what you're saying. And so you, you want the reduction in volume. You don't want to not have the volume going down when you're using the microphone, Peter. But if you want to do it manually, turn off the talk over function and use the faders. That's the way I do it because I tend to talk right up to a big point in the track. I'll talk right up to the drop or right up to the vocal. And then I want to get the track loud again before that vocal kicks in. And there tends to be a time lag on a talk over function where the talk over will check you're not talking for a few seconds and then bring it back, which I don't like. Uh, but you, you, do have to, you do have to reduce the music when you're using a mic. So I'm not sure what you're asking there, but maybe I answered you uh, uh, in my reply there, my kind of vague reply. Michael, I'd like to become a DJ. I don't know what software do you use or even how to use it. So please, please give me some advice. Get the book. I've already told you how to do it. Join Digital DJ Tips. I'll give you a PDF. Click the book at the top of the website to read the book. Read this from one cover to the other before you buy anything. It will save you so much money, Michael. Uh, the next question is uh, just a confirmation from Dave that the M1 is compatible with Rekordbox. So thank you for sharing that, Dave. Uh, the next question is uh, from DJ2AM. Uh, what about doing an interview with either the Crossfader crew or DJ Migs from New Zealand? Funnily enough, um, last year we got, uh, we got me, uh, Jamie from Crossfader, Mojax, um, and um, the guys from DJ Magazine, and a few others, all in one place, and we did a, a live kind of show together, which was a lot of fun. Uh, yeah, we could do that stuff. We might do that stuff again in the future. Who knows? Uh, all good people, though, and uh, it's always, always nice. We, we tend to bump into each other at DJ shows and stuff, but they're not going on anymore, so I've not seen a lot of those guys for a long time. I've been missing them all. We're a small family. The, uh, the DJ uh, teaching community. Uh, we really are. So, um, so yeah, we all know each other. Uh, the next question is from, uh, it's just a confirmation from the Ruckus. Mixed in Key just came out with their Mixed in Key 10 upgrade. It now fully supports Rekordbox DJ as well as some other performance upgrades. Indeed it does. And if you want to read about the new version of Mixed in Key, head over to Digital DJ Tips. We have an article on there that explains all the things that have been added to it. Exciting times for DJ software, for sure. Uh, the next question is from uh, Ken, who says, have you had any issues with tractor pitch control? Can you adjust the sens sensitivity? You can adjust how much it moves. So for instance, on the controller here, uh, the pitch controls are here, and I can adjust, you know, whether that's 4% or 100%, uh, 
but uh, that's done in the software. There's, there's no easy way of doing that here. Uh, so yes, you can adjust that uh, and that will make it so that you get more finesse, if you like, in the adjustment. So look in the software for the pitch range adjustment. Some controllers have got the way of adjusting it on the controller, but it is there in the software at all times. Uh, so Ian says, cheers for mentioning the thing about Tractor. You do a great job here. Well, it's what we do, Ian, but thank you for that. Um, so uh, the next one is from George. He says, how long have you been DJing for? Oh, I don't want to tell you how long I've been DJing for. 1987. I bought my first carpet case mobile DJ rig in clubs since 1991. So there you go. Sono Distorto. Phil doesn't read the Twitch comments. Clearly I do. Sono Distorto. Uh, I wanted to ask a question, but my mind went blank, says our resident humorist of the day. Uh, DJ Georgie, can I add multiple streaming services at once to Serato Pro like Rekordbox? No, you can't. Not yet. You have to pick your streaming service in Serato Pro. Uh, but that will be coming. Uh, I would imagine at some point. Serato Pro has got a pretty weak streaming uh, offering at the moment, I have to say. It's lagging behind the others. Uh, ben, I'm moving to the controller world after years with a C with CDJs. I'm after four channels and record box. I'm not keen on the FLX6, uh, I don't think. Would the DDJ RX still be viable second hand or do I need to save for the 1000? They're both good controllers. Uh, the 1000 is the best selling controller of all time for record box. Uh, the RX, if you can get one that works well, actually gives you more control over record box. You get more control over its effects and so on. So if you're, if you're more into having really good control over the software, Rather than having a club layout, go for the RX or the, I think they, had, they, they got up to the RX2, didn't they? I'm not sure how far the DDJ RX controllers went, uh, but they're very good controllers. So if you can still get one in good, in good nick, uh, go for it. You'll get more control over the software at the expense of a layout which isn't quite so club standard. Um, but you can't go wrong with either of those. I agree with you not being keen on the, uh, on the Flex 6. I don't like it either. Uh, I was wondering, says someone on Facebook, on our Global DJ Network, what's better to get, Pioneer CDJ 3000s or Denon DJ SC 6000s? The Pioneers are industry standard. You'll pay an awful lot of money for them. They don't do as much as the Denons, which are not industry standard, but I've got a lot of extra functions on them. Weigh up what they've both got, weigh up the price, and decide whether you need industry standard or not, and that should help you. Uh, Jamie says, are you aware of any upgrades for the Denon Prime OS in regards to offline locker for Beatport Link and the ability to manage Beatport playlists on the Prime devices directly? I would love them to introduce that stuff, but I don't know if or when they're going to do that, Jamie. Uh, the next live question is from... Uh, and I'm just looking at comments, comments, comments here. Uh, the next live question is from... Jamie. Oh, James, I'm getting bored of your comment. Sorry, mate, but uh, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, so uh, uh, the next live one, because if people just post rubbish in the feed, then I can't see the questions and we end up with me saying this kind of stuff. So please, people, just uh, respect the feed. Uh, as a bar DJ, what do you think the best way is of promoting my nights? Uh, I've been using paid ads on Facebook. I don't get much from that. No, 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 no. Don't do it that way. Uh, the only way to promote your nights is to get people you know to come. Uh, and then keep those people happy uh, and then they'll come back again and they'll bring someone with them uh, and then keep them happy and they'll bring someone else with them. Nights develop from the out, from the inside out. You can't just put posters around town or adverts on Facebook. People don't go to a night out by, by seeing an advert on a Facebook. Uh, they just don't. They, they, they go where they know and where the people they know are going. Uh, so everyone who comes to your event, get their email address, get their details, make sure you let them know every time you do an event, share mixtapes with them, talk to them, get to know them, but start with the people in your phone who you know, get them to come, bribe them, do what you can do, get them to come with you, and then when they come and bring their friends, get their friends to come and bring their friends, and that's the way it works, Martin. It doesn't work any other way. Uh, what do you think of the large DJ-oriented tablet that came out a few years ago? Oh God, I remember that. They had loads of different interfaces like Pioneer's DJ Gear and the SX interface. You know, the modern version of that is virtual reality DJ and there's a company called VR Tribe that have just got the Pioneer CDJ 3000s in virtual reality. And I think it's all rubbish. I think you need to be able to touch real things. I think that touchscreen DJing, uh, 
as something that you do in preference to using real knobs and buttons and jog wheels and so on is rubbish. I mean, I can see the attraction on a phone or on an iPad as a backup DJ device or as a portable device, but look, as your main DJ system, nah, that never caught on. It cost a load of money, it never caught on, uh, and it was for good reason because it's just no fun DJing on those things. Uh, I can't remember what it was called now. It was a big, like, see-through TV, wasn't it? That uh, They looked cool, they looked cool. Uh, but no, they weren't very good. Uh, Joanne, I've just done six months of Digital DJ Lab. I definitely recommend it. Uh, I've learned so much, it's great. We were talking about our Digital DJ Lab program, weren't we? Uh, so uh, lots and lots and lots of you saying YouTube is, is looking absolutely fine, video quality perfect, etc., etc., etc. So um, long time listener, first time writer, says Onar, really enjoy your show. Can I ask if it's at all possible to move tracks from your pen drive to your hard drive within the Prime 4? No, I don't think it is. I don't think you do anything like that within the Prime 4. In fact, I'm sure you can't. Um, so, uh, uh, so no, I think that's uh, you have to do that elsewhere. Uh, the next long-time listener, first-time caller, is Glasses, who says... Um, uh, I'm looking to buy my first set of studio monitors. I read your reviews. I'm deciding between the Pioneer VM70s or Adam Audio T7Vs. I want them for production, but also to rock out as well. I think they're both great monitors. You know, the thing with monitors is you need to hear them uh, and you need to decide whether they're going to look look good and work well in your room. Uh, but I, don't think, I honestly don't think you'll go wrong with either of those. They're both really great. Um, we we love, love the pair of those. Um, Agent 94, would you recommend purchasing the Pioneer DJ DDJ FLX6? Well, I said I didn't personally like it, but it doesn't mean you shouldn't purchase it. Uh, it gives you four channels and it gives you big jog wheels. If, apart from that, everything else about it is consumer quality. It's no better build quality wise than the very cheapest DJ controllers, uh, but you pay quite a lot of money for that. Other controllers at that price point give you far more pro features. So on Friday, as in tomorrow, we're gonna to publish an article which includes the FLX6 and includes all the controllers around it as well. So just wait till tomorrow, Agent 94, and we can uh, give you kind of like a lot more feedback on that than I can give you here on the live comments. Girls, guys, we are finished for today. We've run out of time. Uh, thank you very, very much, everyone, for being part of this. Uh, please give me a thumbs up and a share and a like if you've enjoyed this. Please do subscribe, especially if you're watching the replay on YouTube and you are wondering uh, what, how you could have joined us live. You subscribe and hit the bell, we can let you know. Thank you, everyone watching on Twitch. We do hear you, we do see your comments, uh, and we do value you. Uh, and uh, wherever you've been watching this today, I hope you found something of value. Uh, there you go, Georgie V's on Twitch. She says, I read your book. Uh, it's great. Uh, so thank you for that. And coming straight back at you, Georgie V. Uh, wherever you've been watching this, thank you very much. Remember, we do this every Thursday. We also do it on Tuesdays, where it's Tuesday Tips Live, uh, which is normally something about the DJ world. We'll be talking about a particular subject, piece of gear, piece of software, skill, or whatever. I had Layback Luke on it last week with me, talking about DJing on three or four decks. Uh, so always worth tuning in for that one. Now, as I say, always join us on a Sunday at exactly this time now, uh, where one of the Digital DJ Tips DJs will be playing live on all our channels apart from on Facebook. Uh, and that's it for today. Remember, get your copy of the book by joining Digital DJ Tips. If you're hanging, hanging on, wondering uh, how to join Digital DJ Tips, there is the link. Uh, you can have a copy of this on me. Uh, remember, the DJ Angelo course is going away uh, very, very soon. So go to djtips.co slash tricks to get the DJ Angelo course uh, at $100 off if you play hip hop, funk, soul, R&B, rock, pop, Latin, uh, and you wanna learn Cutting Edge DJ Tricks, that course is the one for you. We haven't made a course like that ever before. We're very, very proud of it. DJ Angelo is an excellent DJ and an excellent tutor. So go take a look at it, djtips.co slash tricks. I am out of here now, folks. Uh, until next time then, take care. See you later. Um, and yes, Stretch BX, I skipped not only your question, but hundreds of others. Uh, we literally have probably 500 questions coming in. So I'm very sorry uh, if we can't get to answer you all. All I will say is all of our students get one of these every month where every question gets guaranteed to be answered. So if you're a student of Digital DJ Tips, uh, doesn't matter whether you spend $50 or $5,000 on our courses, you're invited. You automatically get an invite to our student live uh, webinar like this every single month. So, hey, become a student. We'd love to answer all your questions and that is how we do it. Uh, peace, everyone. Take care. See you soon. Now get good, get out there, make the moments, and we'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.